Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to worship one and all. Welcome to all those here in person, and welcome to all those near and far worshiping with us through electronic means. Welcome and God's blessing to all. Very glad to see and hear that everyone made it safely through the hurricane the other day. As far as I know, the only damage that most people in our congregation had was some water in some basements. If anybody has had any worse than that, it has not reached my ears, but very glad to hear that most people in this area made it through with only minimal damage. Some folks have asked how we can be supportive of those who were hit far worse by the storm than any of us, and the easiest way to do that is to go online and make contributions through Lutheran Disaster Response. So just search that and you will be able to find all the information you need. So again, feel free to look to Lutheran Disaster Response if you'd like to be of assistance to any victims of the hurricane. I've been asked to pass along as well some reminders about the upcoming church directory process. Most people got it through an email already, but also a letter was mailed this weekend to the congregation, letting everybody know the process that will be unfolding this fall. Um, what will happen, starting next Sunday, there will be some sign-ups that will be taken, and it will be for the next several Sundays as well. Right after church, you will have the chance to put your name down and when you would like to arrange to have your picture taken. And there will also be an information sheet spread around to make sure that everyone's directory information is complete and correct. And as always, if there is ever any change in your address or phone number or contact information, please do make sure to let the church office know so that we can get that in the system. But if you have any other questions regarding the directory process right now, feel free to check the letter when you receive it. Otherwise, feel free to take a look at the stuff online or talk to Elaine Bender, who will have plenty of information for you. A reminder that tomorrow, being a federal holiday, the church office is closed. So if you need anything, feel free to give the office a call and leave a message, or feel free to send an email and it will be answered on Tuesday morning when the office is open again. If it's an emergency, you're more than welcome to call my cell phone. But just remember, please, that the office is closed tomorrow and hope everyone has a safe and happy Labor Day weekend. On the note of rain coming down, an update that has been promised regarding the roof repair and ceiling repair out in the coat room. Um, some people have wondered what the latest is, and that is that council has approved the plan to go ahead with the repairs, but we do not yet have a timeline on when that will happen. We're waiting to hear a lot on supply and labor questions, as everybody is these days. So once that is arranged, I will make sure that everybody knows what the plan is. And whenever the construction happens, we will not use that door to get in and out of the church, but we will go back to using the doors over here, just as long as the construction is going on. So again, feel free to keep an eye online where there will be more updates posted as soon as they are available. I've also been asked to share that Stephen Ministry Training, which we have been planning for the last several months, has been postponed due to some circumstances beyond our control. We do not have an exact timeline as to when the training will begin, but we are committed to getting it back up and running as soon as possible. This means, however, there is time if you are still interested and have been praying and wrestling with whether being a Stephen minister is a good calling for you, and if you are indeed interested, feel free to reach out to any of our Stephen leaders, and the information on that is in the bulletin. But again, please do consider praying about that, and also if you know anyone who would make a good Stephen minister, feel free to talk to them about it and have them chat with me or anyone on the Stephen leader team. A reminder as well that next Sunday we go to our new worship schedule. We will have one service of Holy Communion, not at 9.30, but at 9 o'clock. We will have worship at 9 o'clock at least through the months of September and October. In October, both worship and music and council will be reevaluating and figure out what we need to do, but 
We will keep you updated on that. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to talk to me or to anyone on council. But please know that there will be one service during the next few months at 9 a.m. And next Sunday particularly will be a good one because we have not one, not two, but three baptisms to celebrate. So that will be a great time of rejoicing. So let's plan to be here and to celebrate with the families that day. Your weekly reminder as well to keep an eye on Palm's website, particularly as the construction plans are made, as we know more about what will happen with Stephen Minister Training and a lot of other things, the website will be the first point of information to get out. So please do keep an eye on there. And as ever, if you see anything that someone needs to know, and you know of someone in your family or in your social circles who does not have a computer or doesn't have regular internet access, please do give them a call and let them know. We are all in this together, and we have done a fantastic job of communicating during the pandemic. So let's keep it up. That's all the announcements, so let us rise and begin worship with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Boys and girls, young and old, near and far, good morning. Good morning. Well, what kind of things come to mind when you think of back to school? What do you think of? What, what are some things you think of? What, what are you thinking at home? Yeah, all kinds of new clothing and supplies and things like that. Well, when you get back to school, maybe something that you need is a new box of crayons. So I brought a box of crayons here, and they're all different sizes and colors. Um, so let's, let's take a look at some of them here. Now, this one, this one's a, a, like a, a brand new one. Kind of, it looks like it's been used, but not very much. It looks all clean and nice. You can see it. It's, it's almost like new. But then we have some others here. Uh, this one is missing a wrapper. You know, that just came right off of there. That happens. Um, oop, uh, this one, this one broke. See, it still has a nice point on it, <clears throat> but it, it, it's missing the rest. Here's, here's one that's also broken and missing its paper. Um, and this one has just like a little nub on it. There's not much of a point on there. <clears throat> so they're, they're all different. And we can learn a lot from these crayons, if we think about it, because they all fit neatly in this box. And that's a good picture of the way the church should be. So if you think of the people that make up the church, you think, all different sizes, all different shapes, all different maybe names that sound different, or some are young, 
Some are old, some are dressed in nice clothing, while others may wear clothing that is dirty and worn. Have you noticed that sometimes people that are different are treated differently or like act like others? Do you ever see that? That happens sometimes when we treat people differently. Well, in our, one of our lessons today, James, the brother of Jesus, wrote in the Bible that the followers of Jesus should not show favoritism or treat one another better than another. He said, my friends, if you have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, you won't treat some people better than others. James explained that if a rich person is wearing fancy clothes and a gold ring comes out to one of your meetings and a poor person dressed in worn out clothes also comes, you must not give the best seat to the one in the fancy clothes and tell the one who is poor to stand at the side or sit on the floor. That is the same as saying that some people are better than others, which the Bible says is wrong. We must be careful not to show favoritism in our church or anywhere else. We're all God's children, whether we're rich or we're poor, if we have fancy kind of clothes or any kind of race. As James said, you will do all right if you obey the most important law in the scriptures. It's the law that commands us to love one another as much as we love ourselves. Let us pray. Dear God, please help us to love one another as you have loved us, showing us how every person is adored by you. We don't want to play favorites with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. The first reading is taken from the 35th chapter of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall bring forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will read responsively Psalm 146. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will oh, praise, praise the Lord, Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return, they return to earth, earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is taken from the second chapter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our Lord, glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For a person with fine gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, 
And if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left her daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Twelve years ago, right about this time, 
I started one of my first seminary classes on the New Testament. Our first assignment in that class was to take each of the four Gospels and write a creed for it, a creed expressing what that particular evangelist might have said about Christianity and about the person of Christ using nothing but what was in the text of that gospel. One of my classmates decided to have a lot of fun with this assignment. So she went to a craft store and bought a big parchment scroll. She brought it back, burned the edges, stained it with coffee and with dirt to make it look ancient, and then wrote her creed for Mark on it using this beautiful calligraphy. The professor collected it, along with all the others, put it in her briefcase, and then took it home, where she set the briefcase on the floor in the kitchen. Then her dog walked into the room. You can see where this is going. Her dog decided that whatever was on that scroll smelled like a very appetizing snack, and so she pulled it out of the briefcase and gobbled the whole thing up. I wonder, countless students have defended not handing in their homework by saying my dog ate it, but I wonder how often in human history has a teacher had to stand up in public in front of a class and admit to someone, my dog ate your homework. Now we could laugh at that, of course, because I'm sure most of us in this room, at least once, have experienced a dog eating something that they shouldn't. And of course, we still love them. Dogs are beloved family members in our culture. But that hasn't always been so across time and space. It's definitely not so in this gospel reading. When Jesus calls the Syrophoenician woman and her daughter dogs, those were fighting words. Like most Middle Eastern cultures of that time, and some even to this day, the Israelites had no pet dogs. Dogs were scavengers. They were tolerated because they hung out on the edges of villages and ate the garbage and the bodies of dead animals that were discarded there. And in return, by barking, they alerted humans to danger. But they were not pets. Jesus, in both sections of this gospel, is so overwhelmed by the pressure of the crowds and overwhelmed by trying to keep his mission a secret, knowing that exposure will send him to the cross, that he loses his temper. That's how human God had to become in order to live as one of us, human enough to lose God's temper. Yet, despite losing his temper, Jesus was still God enough to be able to change his mind. He heard good news himself in the woman's words, and it moved him, of course, to heal her daughter. From there, it led him to open the ears of the deaf man, to cure his speech impediment. From here on out, Jesus would let the light of the gospel shine brighter and brighter until the time it revealed him for who he really was. It would lead, yes, to his death, but beyond that, to the third day. The good news is that in spite of being so drained and so burned out, Jesus still was God in the flesh, God enough to change his mind and taught the church to do the same thing. We learned from this lesson to see those outside our own lines, not as enemies, but as bearers of good news. 2,000 years after this scenario, we still live in a world where it's very easy to paint certain categories of people 
not necessarily as dogs, but maybe as scavengers, at least as people not worthy of a place at the table with us. And we all draw those lines somehow. Those who wear masks and those who don't. Those who get their shots and those who don't. Those who think this way or that way about what has unfolded in Afghanistan over the past couple weeks. We have all, at one time or another in our lives, branded others as not belonging around the table with us. And we've all, in turn, been marked by others as those who don't belong. Humans like drawing sharp lines, and we like hiding behind them. Yet, to all of us, no matter what lines we draw, Christ continues to speak the same words that he did to the deaf man with the speech impediment. Be opened. Open your ears and let the good news that your sins are forgiven and that you are a beloved child of God enter. Open your lips and let the fruit of the tree of everlasting life, the body and blood of the risen one, satisfy your hunger. Open your eyes and let them see the hand of God at work in everyone and everything around you in God's good creation. But even if you can't, rest assured that Christ will open them for you. One day, he will say the same words, be opened to wake us all from the sleep of death and will welcome us home forever like the beloved family members that we are in the household of God. That is indeed good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enliven your church. Guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all, especially Phyllis, Nancy and Leon, Rayanne, Gwen, Rick, James, Jim and Christy, Greg and Rachel, Rick, Dorothy, Gary and Linda, Tom, Larry, Ted and Winnie, John, Frank, Tony, JB, Margaret, George, Carl, Carter, Marilyn, Arlene, and Cindy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You. Remaining where you are and sharing the greeting with a wave, let us offer one another a sign of peace, and don't forget to wave toward the camera to greet those worshiping with us electronically. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins, do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we, and all who share in the body and blood of Christ, may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and, receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come. The table is ready. Thanks be to God.
given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you the body of Christ 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 given for you body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. of Christ given for you. The body 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 of Christ given for you.
Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn.